Hi, I'm Danny Duchamp. Welcome to my shitty Honda Fit. Um, well, it's not my shitty Honda Fit today. I'm sitting in a significantly more expensive car in a holiday destination with a much nicer beer than usual. Mmm, yay capitalism. Oh, speaking of which, I have a question for all critics of capitalism. Uh, well, it's not so much a question as it is a story. I want to go through a series of events, and any commies listening at home, let me know the exact second I become an evil capitalist oppressor. Okay? Okay. Settle down, lads. It's story time. I am a settler in New Lands, and whilst walking through the woods, I come across a log. I bring it back to my cabin, and I decide I'll use it as a table. It's a little rustic, but it's not without its charm. But then I think of my friend Dave. He's a fellow settler, and he was also looking for a table, and I also know he has some iron that I really need. So I go to him and ask if he'd like to trade the log table I just found for a little iron. Well, unfortunately, Dave cringes, and he says awkwardly, oh, I was looking for a real table, not just a log. Sorry. So I go to my other friend, Erin, and she's quite the woodworker. I offer to give her half of the iron from the sale if she works it into a real table. She agrees, and uh, she does the work. Dave is happy with his table, so he gets what he wants. Erin and I are happy with our respective shares of the iron, so we both get what we want. Everyone's happy. In fact, given how well this process went, Erin and I make this offer to all the other settlers. I'll go collect the logs if she works them into tables, and we'll split the proceeds. This is so successful that it's pretty much all we're doing after a while. And we're just getting everything else we need by trading the iron for other goods and services. Now, since it's uh, quicker for me to find the logs than it is for Erin to work them into tables, I eventually end up with a huge stockpile of logs, which allows me to put my feet up, uh, satisfied that my end of the work has already been done. So, at which point are you allowed to steal from me? <laughs> By answering that question, the various critics of capitalism will be split into their relative awfulness. If it's right back when I first offered to trade my log for some iron, you're against all trade. Nobody has any incentive to do anything for anyone beyond the kindness of their own hearts. No, I'm not saying nobody ever does anything out of the kindness of their hearts, but they don't do that all the time. Sometimes people are self-interested, and all your society ensures is that people's self-interest can never be directed into mutually beneficial arrangements with others. Enjoy the resulting poverty. Well, maybe some of you were okay with that first attempt at a trade. Maybe some of you made it to the part where I asked Erin to work that log into a table for me. You might say that if I don't know how to work the wood, I shouldn't get any of the money from the trade. But then... Why would I have provided my materials in the first place? You are against all cooperation for the purposes of trade. If we can't get paid for only doing part of the job, in my case log collection, then multiple people's self-interest can never work together in tandem to provide for others. Again, enjoy the resulting poverty. Now, perhaps a scant few of you made it to the part where Aaron and I were making trades with all of the other settlers without calling me a capitalist pig. You might say that because at that point we're only making the tables in order to sell them, we're being exploitative. Well, then you're against specialization. Aaron and I worked together on that, on that project whilst trading with others because we can do our jobs more efficiently if we just focus on the one job each. And everyone else can do their jobs more efficiently if they focus on just their one job. What you're proposing will mean that nobody's self-interest will ever lead them to self-organize and specialize in order to maximize efficiency. Enjoy the resulting poverty. Or, perhaps you got off the train once I'd stacked up a whole bunch of logs and put my feet up. You might say that I, at that point, only owned those logs for use in the market system, so I should have my property stripped from me. Well, then you are against the very act of working efficiently. Nobody will work too efficiently for fear that the product of their work will be stripped from them if they do. Once again, enjoy that resulting poverty. And finally, perhaps a couple of critics of capitalism made it all the way to the end, and if that's you, what the hell criticism do you have of capitalism? I just described someone getting rich by trading with people for their goods and hiring people to help them, and even accruing assets in order to profit from them. What's left?
Oh, I really want an answer to this one, by the way. If you didn't answer during answer time, still give your answer below, please. This wasn't meant to be rhetorical. So, all you radical leftists, get to the comments section and tell this heartless capitalist what for. Ciao!